appreciate the challenge that Ted gave because I started talking with Pastor Keith and Tim about this a while ago, that we really do need to <clears throat> continue to mention this idea of who from First Christian Church is going to go to the mission field. I think God's going to raise somebody up, maybe more than one. I don't know who it's going to be. That's up to him. But whoever it is, I hope they respond properly because if God calls you and you don't go, you're in trouble. No, you're in trouble. I know people, I read stories of people, God called them and they denied it for years and their life was miserable. So when God calls you, please say yes. All right, our next speaker. This is old home week for her. Blanche Hunfield comes from a, with a wealth of education and training with over six, 26 years of ministry experience and a cross-cultural ministry. She graduated with a doctor of chiropractic degree. Oh, my back hurts. <laughs> from Western States Chiropractic College in Portland, Oregon, and is accredited with and a member of the American Association of Christian Counselors. Blanche is currently in a counseling ministry to nationals and internationals alike. Her passion is to support the frontline workers. This includes preparing new missionaries for the field. Now, that's really important. There is a higher percentage of failures uh, in the mission field than we know. And so her passion is to support frontline workers, preparing new missionaries for the field, supporting them while on the field, and then debriefing them as they come off the field, whether they're on furlough or leaving the field. She's also a counselor for New International Mobilization Department's internship program, and this consists of preparing and sending college-age students to different nations for an eight-week summer internship. She's been with New International since 2003, and it really is my pleasure to introduce Blanche tonight because she was at church here for 15 years or so, and so many people here know her. Give her a warm help. Welcome back. You're, oh, they didn't give you a mic? No, I don't oh. have a mic. Oh, uh, you're, supposed, you're supposed to have a mic. You're going to get one right now. Can I put it right up here? You can if you don't leave the podium. Oh, okay. Okay? Yeah. So All right. If well, you want to move around, you have to attach have it to your body. Attach it. <laughs> there it is. Oh, hey, I'm in business okay, now. Okay, now here's the clicker. Oh, okay. oh, I don't know how to use that thing. Uh, all you have to do is click it one time to the next video. Oh. And then the second video follows. Oh, just where just do I, right that one right there yep. for the first that's, video? That's it. Okay. Okay. I think I can do that. All right. Can you hear me? <laughs> Clarion call. That's a strongly expressed demand or request for action. Several decades ago, I was on a short-term mission trip to Argentina, taking a side trip to Brazil. Phew! Little did I know that God would give me my clarion call to missions. Several weeks before that, as I was treating my patients, walking from room to room in my chiropractic clinic, I sensed this in my, sensed this in my spirit. God, there are so many doctors who are healing the body, but who's healing the heart? Shortly after, I was sitting in the church one Sunday morning, listening to the announcements, and the person was saying that they were going to have a short-term mission trip to Argentina. Literally, and I say literally, in that moment, I felt the Spirit saying to me, get up and go give your first $50 to make this trip. I said, you've got to be kidding. I just started my own practice, and I had just started my own practice. This is not a real good time for me to go. Have you ever had such a compelling nudge that you knew you needed to follow that call? 
I did. I got up, went out to the lobby, and I gave them my first $50 for the mission trip. And then I had a year uh, following to be able to get my practice ready to go and to get the funds to be able to make that trip. But that's not the end of the story. It's really just the beginning. The beginning to my clarion call to missions. About a year or so before that, this tall, handsome man came into my clinic, and I know doctors are, have to be careful that they don't get too interested in their patients. He came in after having had his first low back surgery. And we had developed a friendship before that, and I was actually sitting next to him on that Sunday morning. We often went to church together, and I shared with him what had happened to me that morning, and he then said to me, oh, if you're going to Argentina, you need to take a side trip to Brazil. <laughs> it won't cost you that much more. Well... All I kept hearing from him was Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. He'd been a missionary in Brazil for eight years and was at that time back in the States. But he had such a passion for that country and for those people. So with much prayer, I began preparing for the added week I would spend to go to Brazil. Oh, my, I can tell you, and I won't go into it because it's it, – was quite a miraculous thing that God did to me, but he called me and got a hold of me while I was in Brazil. He gave me a clarion call to Brazil. It was so compelling that I knew I needed to answer that call, even though that meant leaving my elderly parents, my children and grandchildren, my practice, and everything that was familiar to me. I wasn't going to tell Lowell, though, because I didn't want him to think that he had been the influence. But it was all in God's timing. Over the next five years, God prepared me to make this move. He had the pic big picture, and he would only give me a little piece, just one at a time. It wasn't easy. There were ups and downs, questions. Did he really call me, or was this just something I had in my own mind? And I would have people come into my clinic and say, well, maybe you should go to Argentina. But I knew that, I knew that call was, was to Brazil. <clears throat> and like I said, it was just so compelling that it just, kept, it just kept nagging at me, no matter what. And I can tell you, the enemy will come in and try and say, uh-huh. Because he knew, he knew if I answered that call, God would use my life in Brazil. So God was not only working out the details for me to go, but he was also working out the details in this man's life. And when all things were in order, we were married in 1994, and the rest is history. <laughs> and many of you know who he was. However, this new adventure, though exciting and new, brought many, many challenges. New culture, new language, different food, different living environments, and mixed into all of this, and many of you who have already experienced this will know, a new marriage. We didn't have an opportunity to develop our marriage before I went to the field with him. Even though we had been friends for five years before we were married, this was a whole new ball game. Lowell was a veteran missionary and had been on the field for eight years. I, on the other hand, was the newbie. And since he was the leader on the field, he had to orient me, along with three other brand new missionaries to the field at the same time that I arrived. <laughs> I can guarantee you some interesting experience followed, to say the least. And yet, we spent nine years together before we moved back to the States in 2003 to Florida, right here, and uh, to join with New International. During my time in Brazil, I was blessed and privileged to mentor and counsel women, particularly the women for potential leadership in the church. And together, Lowell and I, uh, we mentored and counseled 
uh, and discipled couples. Very early on, long before I knew the language, well enough to take on a position at the church, the pastor asked me if I would start an intercessory prayer group. This group was primarily a group that would pray for the development of this brand new church. My first reaction was, God, you gotta be kidding me. This is way out of my comfort zone. And yet with my limited ability to speak Portuguese, and I can tell you it was very limited at this time, the Holy Spirit and I entered into this partnership of developing this group. He knew exactly what he was doing. I learned so much. I learned so much about prayer, and Keith can affirm this. He, he's been there. He knows how these people pray. A brief story. Just want to tell you a little brief story. We had an elderly lady in there in her, in, at the church. She was in her 70s. And about a year earlier, she came to the Lord, and she was one of our eight faithful, faithful ladies that would come to this prayer group. Before her conversion, she probably would be considered just a little bit like uh, Mary Magdalene. She'd had several marriages, and she was quite the lady of the town. She was a party lady. However, talk about a lady on fire for the Lord. Wow, a true intercessor. And you know, God kind of showed me something here. When he gives us, and then we become a believer, that gift surfaces. And oh my goodness, she was an intercessor. Let me tell you. In Brazil, everyone praises, prays at once. And so, and, and uh, loud. It's not quiet. They all pray at once because they said, we're not praying to each other. We're praying to God. And, I, and when this lady would start praying, literally, I had to shut up. And, of course, I was praying in English because I, you know, I didn't know Portuguese at all. But I had to be, it just silenced me. And there were times when I just sensed that this, the roof would open up and Jesus would descend right in the middle of our group. She was so powerful. This faithful group is still existing today. And I believe they were the bedrock to the development and the growth of that church. Because that church now started at 24 people constituting the church with the government to um, around 500 to 600 people today. They started a daughter church and sent missionaries to other countries. And that prayer group is still continuing today. At the time I was there, I was also instrumental in helping start a women's group as well. And I talked to the women. I said, can't your husbands take care of the children just, you know, for a little while? Because there, at that time, when I was there, initially there, and uh, I arrived in 95, this was not done. The men did not take care of those children so that the women could get together and have their women's group. However, that group now is, has grown. They have retreats, and they bring other churches in to join them. And so it's just been incredible. And every time we go back, and we've gone back so many times, the, the group just grows larger and larger and larger. And I've had the privilege of being able to speak to them. It was pretty neat. And I have, I'll tell you, I did it in Portuguese, too. Um, okay, and then came another clarion call. I sensed in my spirit that God was calling us to a broader global ministry. The pastor of the church in Brazil also sensed that call. In 2003, we moved from Brazil to Cape Coral to become affiliates of New International. Lowell as the International Operations Director and I working in what was then de uh, developing a member care department. The mission was small at the time, but grew rapidly, and soon my position changed to pastoral care. However, we were no longer just working in the office. God sent us out to the field to support, to train, to mentor, and to counsel our affiliates and nationals on the fields, traveling over 40 countries in a span of 26 years that we were married. So now, here I am today. The clarion call has not ceased. God has only deepened my missionary passion. 
a passion to continue to take my experience, education, and desire to support those that are preparing to go to the field, those that are on the field, and those that are coming off the field, either for furlough or for making a life change. God has added to this the opportunity to be the counselor for the mobilization department of the mission. The mobilization department is responsible for college-age summer interns. These internships are for eight weeks from the end of May to the, to the end of July. And now I'll see how techy I am. Because I want you to see this video about our venture. Okay, one more time, did you say? I've had such a privilege to be, I'll be talking about that a little bit more later, but I've had such a privilege to be able to be a part of this venture internship. And I can tell you that the leaders are incredible. So just give a little pitch. I would encourage anyone who has college age uh, family or friends that if they, if they have any interest in missions at all, this is an incredibly, wonderfully, well-run uh, program. So I just encourage you to tell them to, to go visit us. When we were in Brazil, we worked with young people over the years. God started stirring within me a passion for young people. And today, that has only increased. Why? I don't know. But he does. And that's good enough for me. So here I am. Continuing in what I have done since I entered missions, but now I have this new opportunity that was given to me over two years ago. An opportunity to touch the lives of young people who have a deep desire for missions. 
I see the eagerness on their faces as they come to a week of pre-field orientation, going through an in-depth and very rigorous preparation for an eight-week journey into the Andong, then following up with them while they are on their internships. On their return to Fort Myers, they go through another very intensive week of debrief. Again, it is such a privilege to be able to hear the stories, their experiences, the challenges that they all are, have faced during the internship. And I will tell you that when they go on these internships, they are intense. And this last year, we had, we had eight going out. Sometimes uh, it's a lot more than that. But this, because of the pandemic and everything, it was eight. We had five girls and three guys. Where do you think the girls would go? Nah, you don't know. I'm going to tell you. They went to Liberia and Jordan. Where did the guys go? Nothing wrong with this. But where did they go? They stayed at the CGO, but they were working outside of the CGO. So no matter where the internship is, whether it's at the mission, CGO is Center of Global Outreach, our mission here on 41. And or whether they go overseas. But these girls, especially those that were going to Jordan, I remember one parent said to me, we're sending her. We don't know if she'll come back. And yet the girls, that was not a problem for them. They were so eager and happy to go. As we all know, young people are faced with enormous challenges. Ones I know that in my generation, I never had to experience. If I do not listen to them, I can never know exactly what they are experiencing, what they are feeling, what their desires are for the future, for their generation. To be a part of their mental, emotional, and spiritual development just warms my heart with excitement. So many times in my conversations with God, I'll say, why God? How, wow, how did I get so blessed that you have chosen me to walk alongside these young people. Their hearts for missions, their desires to serve cross-culturally, leaving families, leaving friends, familiarity, even possibly lucrative paying jobs, and go on these unknown journeys. My mind reflects back on Moses. Remember, we all know Moses. He was called to a foreign land, not knowing, just leaving. And then we all know about the disciples when Jesus said, follow me. And they left everything, and they followed. Well, I kind of like to think a little bit, and I realize, you know, Moses and the disciples, a pretty heavy deal there, right? Uh, but I kind of like to think that these young people, though not Moses, and yet in a way they are. Like, not like exactly like the disciples, but in a way they are for this generation, as Moses and the disciples were for theirs. And of course, I don't want to leave out those that God gives a clarion call to when, when they are older, because I'm one of them. God gives that call to any age, and I appreciate what you said, Ted. Younger to older and everything in between. And I think of a little Elena. I don't know if she's here. My goodness, every day she comes and gives me a hug. And she's, she is so on fire for missions. And last night she told me, I know where I'm going to go. I'm going to go to Guatemala. Well, at the age of seven, at a VBS, I... Before I left the house that morning, oops, am I not good here? I, before I left the house that morning, I told my mother, I said, Mom, I'm going to accept Jesus today. I, and I went to the VBS class, and I did exactly that. I went to my teacher, and I told her I want to accept Jesus today. Well, my teacher just happened to be a pre-field missionary who was going to Japan, well, I was in this little church in, North, in Minnesota, and for those of you who uh, maybe don't can't even think of, of this, but it was a very small church, and downstairs were the Sunday school classes, and they were divided by a curtain. 
Yeah, I know, I'm dating myself. Okay, but I went down there all by myself, and I went in that little cubicle, and I said, I'll go to Japan. I know God planted that seed in my heart at that time. <clears throat> Not a question on that one. Well, again, like I say, this is just where God is, has called me. It's difficult for me to share much of what I do given the confidential aspect. But Cassie Smith and all of you, I'm, or a lot of you know her. She's just now uh, part of, you guys are, are supporting her so that she can go to Australia. Well, she's on my team. And she gave me this privilege to do this. In fact, she offered to share a video uh, because of her experiences that she's had with me. And as you listen to it, much of that is what I do around the, around the globe. But I can't talk about it, okay? Well, hello, First Christian Kid Pro family. I'm so glad that you get to hang out with Blanche tonight and hear a little bit about what she's doing, what she's been up to over the last couple of years. I know that a lot of what she does as a counselor is pretty confidential, and I've actually been through counseling with Blanche. She's my counselor, and I really love her and what she does. Um, so I offered to her to share a little bit about my story and my journey with her. Just so that you can see and hear a little bit more about who she is and why she does what she does. So when I was first pursuing counseling with Blanche, um, I was still serving with the mobilization team. So we were traveling a lot, bouncing around from different conferences and universities. And so it was hard for me to find a counselor that was here, local in Fort Myers, that I could meet with on a regular basis because I was never here on a regular basis. What made Blanche so special at the beginning was that she was willing to meet with me over Zoom from her home Dallas, specifically a lot of the things that she would do is she wanted to point me right back to Jesus every time. And so we talked a lot about how God was not afraid of my questions, he was not afraid of how I was feeling in those moments, but that he also had answers and resolutions to those things. And that he loved me in the midst of those questions, but he loved me too much to let me sit and stay in that state of confusion. So now I am not a consistent counselor with Blanche. I've kind of graduated from that now. She's there kind of as needed, and she's only ever an email or a phone call away. And I have definitely reached out to her and said, you know, I have to go every week, and we have a session, and we talk about some of these things. But she's also done a really good job of giving me the tools that I need to work through those things on my own. So the other big thing that we kind of got to do together is, based on my experience as an intern, we've seen ways that our team of the mobilization group can't debrief our interns fully. We can help them process a lot of things to a certain extent, but a lot of times internships do bring out these things that they did for me and processes of who are they and identity issues or lies that they believe and things that they didn't realize their parents had said to them or things that came up during their childhoods and just all this different stuff and we're not prepared to do those things. We're not counselors. And so we felt the need to bring somebody in who could meet with Jesus in the middle of those things. And so because I had gone through an internship and had that Blanche helped me in such amazing ways. We actually invited Blanche to come in and be a part of what we do. So every summer she's now a part of interviewing and talking to our interns and then debriefing them when they get back off the field. And everybody loves her. Everybody always has amazing observations to say about their time with her. And even if there's nothing big, she's one of the sweetest people to sit down with. And she's so encouraging and speaks truth and makes it so exciting to see what God's going to do in their future. And so we've really enjoyed having Blanche and love the role that she's so when you are taken out of your home culture and everything that you know and everything that you're familiar with and you're dropped into this new place and you don't understand what they're saying or how they're saying it and why they do the things that they do and sometimes it feels like it's a, a direct conflict with the way that you want to do things and the way that you view the world, whether it's right or wrong, it's kind of irrelevant. 
so very grateful. Now I'm going to... Now I'm going to talk. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I am so grateful for the many years that this church has supported Lowell and I. And like I said, since January of 2004. And I'm so grateful and I was so blessed when Pastor Keith and the elders ordained me as a minister in counseling. I believe it was about 2013 or 14. It literally, and I, I'm, it just literally transformed my ministry. And you will never know, and I know all the missionaries have said this, how many lives have been touched, how many souls will be in heaven, because you gave low and I. And now me the opportunity to serve the kingdom as missionaries for over 26 years, and uh, we're counting. I'm not done yet. God has given me the desire to continue the passion that Lowell and I had, and we partnered together 24-7. We were, we were a team. We were just a team. In fact, he has only deepened it. And I look forward to the doors he will continue to open and the opportunities he's going to give me in the future. God is alive and well, and so am I. Okay, in just a second, um, our elder Brad is going to come up and close us out. I just want to say a few words before Brad does that. Um, I just want you to know that all the missionaries that we have, especially those uh, that we took on last year uh, when I was around, uh, the Lord led us to them because we start with praying about it. When we see our missions program expanding, we have to turn to the Lord first and ask him to pair us with the right people. And that is how we acquired these missionaries that we love so much. And we can love them so much because we know it came from the Lord. We prayed about it, and he opened the doors, and these are the people he provided us. So now I'm going to turn it over to Brad and let him do his closeout. Uh, first of all, it's exciting for me to be able to see um, Cassie. Uh, I, my wife and I, uh, former wife and I, had the privilege of supporting Cassie on her very first missions trip when she was 15 years old. And uh, to see where she's at now is really an affirmation of what we felt about her from the Lord from the beginning. And then one of the young men that you saw up there in the video, uh, uh, he used to weed my rock bed at the house until he started doing missions projects. Um, just a couple things, and I, I promise I will make this brief. Uh, I'm privileged to serve on the, thank you, I don't have notes, I actually, that's something else. Uh, I'm privileged to serve on the uh, Board of Trustees at Lake Aurora Christian Camp, which our church supports with their mission giving. And so I'm an indirect beneficiary of uh, the graciousness and goodness and the generosity 
of this church and the Lord's blessings on everything that he does. I want to make sure I get this quote right. So I'm going to pull out my phone and I'm going to get on Facebook. I'm just letting, this is full disclosure here. And I'm going to go to my, uh, my own personal page and I'm going to look here and lo and behold, this is what I was looking for. Sunday morning. Uh, I always look for something to take out of every conference. Sometimes it comes at the beginning, sometimes it comes at the end. On Sunday morning, this is what our brother Bob Kraft said, and it has been in my head ever since. It's a very short sentence. Every living thing on earth must be within the sound of the gospel. That is our mandate. I mean, Jesus gave us the mandate just in different words. Uh, thank you, all of you that are here tonight, the missionaries that are here tonight, the people that have been here all week, the families uh, that have been here all week, uh, all of you who have been here all week. Um, there have probably been, during the course of the week here, about roughly 125 different people that have attended from our church here this week, maybe a few more. Just giving you a thought, our goal is for this next year, is, or for this year, is $250,000. If each of the 125 people gave $50 a week for 2022, we would meet that goal. The math isn't really that complicated. 250 sounds big until you break it down, and then you realize that bit by bit uh, we, can, we can do this together. So thank you for your generosity, and thank you for your prayers toward that. Um, before I pray... This after, we have a uh, Christian homeschool group that meets here on Thursday afternoons. And today I was privileged to lead the Bible lesson. And we talked about Jesus and the ten lepers and giving thanks. And it, but it was specifically about cross-cultural, that Jesus was a Jew and that the, the lepers were Samaritan. And the Samaritan leper, leper is the leopard. The Samaritan leper is the one who came back and thanked Jesus. And we talked about reaching across different cross-culture, and again, I have to use different words because I'm dealing with three-year-olds to 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds. And so we talked about giving thanks, and so at the end of that, uh, what they did was um, for all of our missionaries that are here tonight, they made thank you cards. And so when we're done this evening, I'd like for you to come up and just grab a few. Uh, pretty neat what they did. Uh, gave them a couple of suggestions. Um, Ryan, there's actually, or Jason, not Ryan, Jason, there's actually a couple of them up here that I want specifically for you to have. Um, everybody else, you can just grab whatever you want to. So, ushers, if you'll come on up here, and if you'll be patient enough to let the ushers work, their, well, ushers, they're serving, they're collecting our offering tonight. If you'll be patient enough to let them get back to you, I know sometimes you want, you're trying to chase them down, so that's why we brought them up front today. So I'm going to pray. We're going to collect the offering. We're going to dismiss, and we are going to give God the glory. That's what we started out to do this week, is to give God the glory with what we are doing. So we're going to give God the glory. Uh, when we leave here tonight, we'll thank our missionaries, and we'll be dismissed. So let's pray together, please. Our generous, heavenly, holy, loving Father. Wow. What an incredible blessing you have poured out on us this week by giving us the privilege of partnering with these men and women from around the world to partner with your gospel and to carry out the mission of Jesus that he's commanded us to do. We love being able, Father, to give back to you what you've so generously given to us. Father, in the miraculous way that only you do, you take the gifts that we give and you multiply them even better than the five loaves and two fishes. You multiply these into lives that are invested in for the kingdom that are going to make a difference in eternity. And we are so grateful for that. We are so thankful for that. So, Father, like the Apostle Paul to the Philippians church, we want to say to our brothers and sisters here, 
in all of our prayers for all of you. We always pray with joy because of our partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on into the completion of the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray these things in his name. Amen.